Okay, so what do you know about the Conti ransomware? I've heard nothing of it so far. <clears throat> so this is a strain of ransomware that is using a new business model that basically focuses on bringing low-skilled actors into the fold mm -hmm. as both patsies and enablers. So if you were to write some sophisticated ransomware, um, then one of the things that you could do if you were, I don't know, a big time crime organization or like a country that wanted to make it look like you weren't the ones responsible is you could create a playbook for other actors to actually use the thing that you wrote and receive a profit while you also get a cut. So if you are able to basically provide the infrastructure necessary to launch an attack and then collect payment, you can just kick back and just get affiliate like bonus, like affiliate revenue, basically from this thing happening, uh, because other people are willing to take on the risk. Often, maybe dumber people who have less to lose. So the way that this ransomware was uh, kind of like being distributed was actually like the way that like I don't know, like a like a Burger King or a Wendy's operates. It's like somebody came up with the main idea and started franchising it out to affiliates, and they would provide them with a handbook. It was like kind of like null bite. It was just like a bunch of like guides also on like how to deploy this on like how to do a scan, how to use Metasploit mm -hmm. and some of the things that they were also using um, or like recommending their lower skilled people, their affiliates to use were like um, Armitage. Oh, nice. Do you know Armitage? Uh, isn't that that uh, GUI based thing for like DDoS attacks? I think? Um, no, no, that's, that... that's low orbit ion okay, cannon. Never mind. So I've Armitage, it, Armitage, um, you should recognize because it's like one of the only um, built in tools on Kali that has like an anime icon. Hmm. Um, and it is a GUI, but it's a GUI for using Metasploit to find and attack targets. And it's typically not used by high skilled actors. Uh, I'll, I'll just say that because it's like extremely apt. It's like point and click, it's like really, really easy. Hmm. Um, once you learn a little bit about what you're doing. So, um, so yeah, they're talking about how to use all uh, these different commercial tools like Cobalt Strike and other things um, to be able, oh yeah, see Armitage, um, to be able to, once you get in, um, establish persistence and expand the attack. So yeah, it's, it was just interesting to see all the educational tools that they included for the affiliates. So like, all right, you rascals, these are the tools you're going to need. They show Mimi Cats, Kerber Roasting, Router Scanning, um, all these different techniques for um, making a, a breach worse, basically, uh, by looking for other vulnerabilities and escalating their privileges. So um, they made uh, apparently a lot of money on this. Um, these were distributed in zip archives and um, recently I guess some members of the gang who became disgruntled have been leaking this so that's why we get some insight into the way that uh, these sorts of organizations make money. It's just fascinating to think that like the original actors behind this, whoever they were, just went ahead and shot this out to people that didn't care about getting caught uh, and then made a bunch of money off of the backs of people who didn't know enough to write the ransomware, but knew barely enough to deploy it and profit off of it. So using criminal activity as a way of generating money and um, leading attention away from the people who are responsible for this sort of thing is a tactic that uh, nation states and other people use pretty often to be able to raise money, wreak havoc, or blame somebody else for activity that they in fact are doing. So I'm not pointing any fingers here, but it just seems like it takes a lot of resources to put together all of this. And um, yeah, like there's a couple of nation states that in particular have a long history of using criminal elements and allowing them to operate within their country uh, in order to create kind of a smoke screen between like offensive cyber operations. So I wouldn't really be that surprised if this was a case of something similar. But then again, criminal organizations can be smart if they are making money. So maybe this is just an example of organized crime as well. Who knows? And that's all the time we have for this week. I want to thank Zam in particular again for bringing a lot of these stories to our attention. His outrage in particular over the Autodesk one I think resonates very well with a lot of users. So I'm glad we included that. And if you feel like we missed anything or if you have any questions from this stream, make sure to leave them on the YouTube channel so we can answer them during the Q&A next week. All right, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you to everyone in the stream and we'll see you next time. Bye.